12-Sided Stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. In the city of dreams, everyone wants to be a star, but at what cost? 12-Sided Stories presents Otherworld Hollywood. And welcome to Otherworld Hollywood episode number 26. My name is Wes. This is our Call of Cthulhu actual play. We have some wonderful players with us. Let's start with Candace. Hello, everybody. My name is Candace McAfee, also known as Candace Magnificent. My pronouns are they, she, and I'm playing Ebony Belafonte, she, her. Hey, I'm Michelle Otis, and I am playing Belle Bellington. Hello, hello, I'm Sam Starr. I use she, they, and the occasional fey pronouns. And today I am playing Imani DeVoe, she, her. Hey, y'all, I'm Mac. I'm going to be playing Cass Richardson, a.k.a. Lenore Von Mori, a.k.a. The Vamp, a.k.a. Also now a werewolf, things are happening. Hello, I'm Lev. My pronouns are they, them, and I am playing Roberta Robbie Cedillos, they, she. Enjoying the show? Then take a moment to join our Patreon, Support the podcast and get early access to episodes and bonus content. Head to 12 Sided Stories Patreon today. All right. So in the last episode, we spent most of it in the dreamlands, in two different dreamlands, with Penelope and Cass. They were at the court of Sir Nunos in the middle of the Great Forest. They went on a hunt. Cass tried to take down an elk, did not do well, was mentored by another wolf to help out and then got an audience with Sir Nunos to be able to ask a question. Did they ask to be a full-blooded werewolf with no curse of the moon, that they could remember what they were doing instead of just being at the whim of nature? No, no, they put their friends first and asked if they could get help with attacking this serpent creature. What an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Sir Nino said, you know, uh, advisor said, yes, but I need you to destroy a trinket that keeps us from entering the mortal realm. Get rid of that trinket and we will help you. And for those of you who don't know, if you haven't, don't know that story, go back to Otherworld London and listen to that series and you will Easter's in it and Sir Nino's and a bunch of other people. So meanwhile... Over in the other dream world, Robbie, Ebony, Imane, and Belle woke up in a large city that had all of these different cultures kind of put together, like different buildings and people, and even alien citizens that were from other realms and worlds walking around. And they found Ra, Bassett, and Hathor in a pool and basically talked about the tentacle priest in the mirror because of their help with Sekhmet they were given a weapon a spear of Ra with Ra's blood on it to be able to dispatch this priest who is basically corrupting the dreams of the people in Hollywood with help of its master Cthulhu as players you all know what Cthulhu is but as you know, PCs as your characters have no clue. Belle got a protective scarab that bored itself into her forehead. So there's that. Finally, Robbie got a kiss and maybe more. We don't know. We fade to black here because we're modest, sort of. Not really. We're lying. Robbie got her first kiss from a, a goddess and that's always cool. And then they all woke up to the sound of Penelope's butler showing up for a day of work on Sunday morning. And they looked at Ebony, and Ebony had aged quite a bit, several years, possibly decades, and had very white hair and wrinkly skin. That's where we ended it last time. Let us start where we ended. All of you are looking aghast at Ebony. Why are you all staring at me like that? Do I have a scarab growing out of my head? No. Um, I... 
Although I... Not exactly. I think you might wish you did, though. What? (laughs) That's ridiculous. Amani holds up an open compact. You see what you could swear is your grandma in front of you as you look in the mirror. Oh, what a... What is this joke? <laughs> Did you pick this up? I mean, levity, of course, is a wonderful place in the most horrific of situations, and I appreciate you trying to make me smile, Imani. <laughs> this is one of those those trick ones, right, that has a, a ridiculous picture inside. I'm going to guess there's a, a mirror in the, in the hallway, like in the foyer. <laughs> Imani just closes the compact and sticks it back in her pocket. I just take Ebony's hand and I lead her into the foyer. Belle, where are you taking me? This is ridiculous. Just tell me what's wrong. When she takes your hand, you feel a bit of pain in your knuckles. Not arthritis. And your your back hurts a bit. Like you didn't sleep in a good position. Well, I mean, that's true. Sleep has been coming very rough to me lately. So I was in an earthquake, you know, Belle. A terrible shaking of my house, so it's no wonder I have joint pain and stiffness. Do you look at your hand? I don't see why I would. Okay. Things are perfectly normal. Okay. And denial is a river in Egypt. All right, so, (laughs) Belle, you take her to the hallway, and you look up, and there's a full-length mirror at the end of the hallway, and you are probably about half an inch to an inch shorter than you were. You are hunched over just a little bit, not majorly, and your face has all of these wrinkles and your hair is stark white. I kind of hang on to her elbows just in case. Belle. (laughs) Belle, no. No, no, Belle, no, no. Belle, I'm not even 50 years old yet. I'm not even 50 years old, Belle, no. No, 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 this is, um, uh, Hathor said good things were coming. This is not good. Oh, Belle, no. No, 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 no. No, wake up. Wake up. It's a dream. It's a dream. Belle, it is a dream. She slaps you in the face. She slaps herself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Belle, wake up, Belle. Is this your dream? Is this something you're doing to me, Belle? Please. <laughs> Please, no. Oh, <laughs> Let's go sit down. Maybe it's temporary. <laughs> no, Belle, no. No! I hug her, and I slowly walk her to a chair. Cass fixes her a drink. What am I going to do? Oh, you've all just been looking at me like this for how long? Oh my god. Oh, you must be disgusted. Oh god. No, you look really nice for an old person, I think. Buttercup won't recognize me. Oh. Robbie, Ro- Robbie, Robbie, darling. Oh. You could just, next time you can just leave off for the old person part. You just no. say she looks nice. Don't silence them. I am old. It's fine. Oh God. But you do look nice and you are old. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to you're going to age. That's part of being alive. My career is done. It's it. It's over. It's over. There's no roles for 40 year old women, let alone 80 year old women. Oh God. I'll write. I'll write a role for you. Oh, Robbie. And I'm just I'm just holding her no. and letting her cry. <laughs> Cass sits on the other side of her and hands her the drink. She chugs it like it's her job and like shakes it at you for another one. <laughs> <laughs> I just quietly go and make another drink. <laughs> I think Evany cries herself into passing out. Oh okay. bless her heart. The hysterics pass you out. Okay. Yeah. So we'll come back to you then. Ebony falls back onto the fainting chair, completely knocked out, and the room is silent for a moment. What do you all want to do now? Cass is going to look at Ebony and look at the others and go, let's, let's go, let's go lay her down in a room somewhere comfortable. Okay. I'll help carry. Yeah. I'll like put her arm around like my shoulders on one side and help kind of carry her. Okay. So you take her into one of the guest rooms and lay her down and she's sleeping, basically passed out on the bed. And the rest of you go back into the room and you remember that they had mentioned that war isn't actually dead. Should we look in the chest since they said war isn't dead? Should we like... Wait, war isn't dead? Oh, yeah. They said that war might not be all the way dead. That's what they told us. Well, they said he's probably not dead. And 
Oh, and we need to find that spear. Spear? Oh, my. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ra gave us a spear to fight the, the thing in the mirror, uh, which is the priest of another thing. And he said, don't miss. We got tasked with severing the connection. Also, they put a bug in Belle's face. Yeah, I was just going to say that you notice that Belle has a large lump in the center of her head and every once in a while it moves God. Oh, God. you had to put what? that in there, why? didn't you? Fucking why? Yeah. <laughs> See, like a little wing move to the side. And... I hate it here. <laughs> I think Cass very quietly on the inside, kind of very on the inside, chuckles to herself just because I think she's still salty at Belle. <laughs> Belle wouldn't blame you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly the phone starts to ring. We're not missing work. It's Sunday. This We're not wrong this time. Hello? It's Danny. Hey, so we only have like, I don't know, three days to finish up filming for this film. So I'm hoping that you all are in the same location because I've called everywhere else. And uh, I need you to come in and and do some scenes. Now, today? Yes, now today we have to get a bunch of filming done. The premiere is like literally four days away. Well, uh, and and I think... Cass looks around in a panic and goes, uh, well, I, I, uh, it's just me and, and Penelope here at the moment. I, I'm not sure where the others are, but, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll try and uh, find everyone. Well, do it quickly, and please let Penelope know that we're going to be having a conversation about the fact that she never came in yesterday after I asked her to to help with the PR going on with the dead body in our parking lot. I'm I'm sure I'm sure she was busy. Uh huh. It, it's fine. Just we'll figure it out, okay, Danny? Just be here in an hour. And he hangs up the phone. Shit. So the real life intrudes, and we're expected at the studio in an hour, which I don't really see happening. Evie, Evie. Mm. Well, like I said, I don't really see an hour and us being at the studio happening. So we might as well go check on. If war is dead or not, I guess. And if there's a spear. Well, do we want to look? I was sad that war died because he seemed sad. But also, I think it is bad if we let him out again. Uh, I wasn't suggesting we do that. I don't think we can keep him prisoner, though. He's not he's not of our world. You know what I mean? I don't I don't think we can keep him prisoner. But if we open it, he can bust out easier. Right. We have to go in there anyway, don't we? Yeah, we got to go get that spear. Penelope says, um, so I know that there are spells in my library books that could mask what's going on with Ebony, but it's dangerous. For her or for the person casting the spell? Both. That is always an option. I I don't know about anybody else, but I've never cast a spell. Well, we don't have a lot of time, so we'd have to look at it now. And Where's Easter? Easter bonks its head against your uh, leg and walks past and goes through your legs as if on cue. I, I pick him up and I put my forehead against his and I say, uh, is there any way Bastet or Hathor can help Evie? When you bonk him against your head, all you hear is the chittering of the scarab in between you and it. Uh, I like, I think I would just kind of let East like drop Easter. Like, uh. yeah, it's like, it's like static, like a June bug inside your ear. Ah! (laughs) Are you okay? Robbie, you're going to have to talk to Easter. (laughs) I scoop up Easter. What did you want me to ask him? Can, can one of the goddesses help? Evie. Bonk. Easter, can one of the goddesses help Evie? Well, Hathor does owe her a, a boon, and you have been very helpful. I will ask. Oh, thank you. I have to go to sleep. Okay. And he just falls asleep in your arms because he's a cat. Robbie freezes and doesn't move. <laughs> I can't move right now because um, Easter's immediately asleep, but he said he'd go ask because Hathor apparently owes Evie a boon? Did anyone else know that? Like most of this, it's news to me. So what do you all want to do while Easter is 
catnapping. I want to go check on war. Yeah. Okay. So all of you file into the werewolf detention center. Against the wall is the spear, and the blood is still all over it. And it actually is acting strangely. It's like the blood is moving up and down the spear, almost like little rivulets, not drying or anything like that. And the chest is just sitting there. And there's a new note on top of the chest. I believe the last note was addressed to you, Belle. Yeah. I go and I open the note. Why avoid the gifts that we want to give you? That's all it says. And I just say out loud, because your gifts come at a cost. You look back down at the note and the words have changed. It now says, you have a bug in your forehead. I know. So what cost are you worried about from us? More than just myself. There's no more writing after that. Kind of crack the lid. (laughs) So you crack the lid and war is crumpled up inside. Do you open the lid all the way? No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I just look at at Lenore and I go, um, he's still in there. I mean, I guess that's not the worst thing in the world right now. Can I tell if the spear is acting like a, a shield? I guess in a way like the spear is like keeping war in the box or not. I'm going to, you don't need to make a roll. You don't think the two are connected, especially since any weaponry or anything like that is kind of war's domain. So it's not keeping them in the box. You sit there with the lid cracked. If you don't close the lid at some point, war opens one eye and he looks up at you. He goes, shit, I'm not dead, am I? I suppose not. Damn it. Well, help me out of here, please. Uh, You're not going to hurt us, right? I haven't heard you so far, have I? All right. So I I open the lid and I help him out. He kind of unfolds as you get him out. You hear all this cracking and stuff as his body readjusts into its human form. We're going to jump over to Candace real quick, okay? Candace, you... Find yourself back at the Radiant Pool, and Easter is next to you. And Easter looks up at you and goes, I brought you here. Hathor is going to speak with you. Thank you, small cat. Hmm. This is a terrible time. Well, you've done Hathor a great service, so maybe she'll be able to help you. Maybe. Maybe so. Easter leaves, and Hathor enters the room. And she walks over to you, and she has on her gossamer robe... And she looks at you and goes, I take it the blessings of New Day Cosmetics has worn off on you. You've been cursed in a way. Indeed they have. I feel so much older than I should be. Hmm. I can help you, but the process requires a commitment. A commitment? Uh, I've committed to roles and I've committed to this lifestyle and I've uh, I've never committed to a person <laughs> but it's 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 not too late is it no i just have to give you part of myself to rejuvenate you you would need to become one of my wives if i am going to give you a piece of me what wife what are you oh 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 a wife uh, yes a wife i uh, i accept <laughs> okay wait, wait wait i should probably Ask what that entails. What do you, what do you need from me? I, I warn you, I don't know how to cook a thing. Darling, we have servants to cook our stuff for us. Oh, oh, what a relief. Yes, I, please, I, I would. That would make me the happiest woman alive. Then she gets really close to you and says, then let's reverse everything and we fade to black. All right, because of how differently time works in the dreamlands, After an extended period of lovemaking, you wake up on Penelope's guest bed. Your looks have been restored, and you have a small black tattoo on your hand that signifies your marriage to Hathor. I think Ebony kisses it and looks into the mirror, and while she looks the same as she used to, she can still see that there's a huge difference in her posture, in the light within her eyes, there's a lot of resentment and bitterness and anger 
that is melting away by the second, the more she looks at the symbol and the more she thinks of her love and the more she realizes that the person that she was before wouldn't have deserved that, but the person she's become does. Buttercup jumps up on the bed and starts like doing the whole zoomy circle thing. Buttercup, I understand. I understand. It's a wonderful day. I can't wait for you to meet your new mummy. Yes, she's beautiful. She's wonderful, Buttercup. Yes. Where are the others? Let's go. Let's go see everyone. It's a new day, Buttercup. You get out of bed and you start to walk out towards the main hallway. I think partway you find Robbie kind of like pacing with Easter still in their arms. I was going to bring Easter in, but you sounded busy and I didn't want to open the door. Complicated things. There was a lot going on, Robbie. I mean, I wouldn't have minded if you opened the door. You would have gotten quite an education. But also, um, thank you for being so kind and so sweet. And she gives you a giant kiss on the cheek and a squeeze and then kisses Easter on their nose and just like floats by you. Very different vibe. I've gotten so many kisses today. Easter suddenly wakes up and like hits you on the head, Robbie. Ow! Why is there a dog in my house? Well... It's Evie's and she's doing something different. So I, I, she's really happy. So I don't know if, I don't know. Hathor was able to help her, obviously. Oh. Yes. Oh. Anyway, keep me away from that dog. I have no time for lower species. I'll sling him around my neck like a cat scarf. This is indignified, but I will deal with it. You're riding a human. That's that's pretty. I'm 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 your chariot. Think of me as your chariot. Proceed, Robbie. Oh, I'll, I'll kind of awkwardly follow. <laughs> okay, so you get inside the wolf room, and War is standing there with all of you kind of around him, and he goes, "I was so hoping that this was going to be." real. That thing told me that it would be able to take my life and I would not have to suffer in this world anymore. But here I am. You all look different. And he looks directly at Belle's forehead and he goes, fighting amongst you is not going to help us in our situation. I want to know what's going on. Well, so do we. <laughs> if I'm being honest, there's there's a lot there's the thing that said it could kill you, but it, it really couldn't. Uh, but it said everyone should get what they want. And there's Egyptian gods involved. And now there's a werewolves and their god involved. And uh, it's a lot. I don't know what the end goal is here. In short, a shit show. In short. Well, I have gotten to the point where I no longer resent you. So I'm going to take my leave and try to find out some answers for myself on how to move forward. I might see you at the studio. Can I ask how it got you in that box? I believe it. Well, it, it told me it could kill me. It strangled me. Everything went black. Then it broke my legs and my torso and shoved me into the box. Oh, okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't a finesse kind of a thing. It just kind of, okay. No, no. It, it physically shoved me in there. And I tricked myself into thinking that I was dead. But I realized that instead of nothingness, it was just really dark. Then Belle opened up the chest and I heard you all bickering with each other. And I'm like, oh, I must not be dead yet. I don't know that you can die. I don't think I can. You're kind of a concept. Yeah, as long as there's human wars going on, I exist. And those aren't going anywhere, I don't think. Unless you enact, unless you become like peace, like the god of peace, you know? Yeah. Because that's the only way that war doesn't happen is if there's peace. So if you make peace happen, there's no wars and then you can die. It's a win-win. Maybe someday, Robbie. I'm leaving. I have things to do. Good luck. And he walks out. So you're all standing there. You've got about, I'm going to say, 30 minutes until Danny has a conniption. Also, Cass, you know that you haven't spoken to Henri in a while. What do you all want to do? Let's just go around and find out what each person is going to do. I'll start with Belle. Belle, you have this thing in your head. Are you going to go to the studio? Actually, the first thing Belle wants is a shower and a change of clothes. I figured that's what all of you would be doing. <laughs> but yeah. um, 
I'm not going to go directly to the studio. I want to go talk to some friends I have at the police station, but I'm not going to tell the others that's where I'm going. I tell them, you know, I just have to talk with some people and I'll meet you all. Now, you know that most of the police station is in Tony's pocket, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you do that. Cass, what are you going to do? Probably go home, get put together. If Henri is there, have a conversation with him, I guess, and then go to the studio. All right. Penelope kisses you on the cheek and says, all right, I'll meet you at the studio. I'll tell Danny you're all going to be late because you were all caught off guard by the fact that you have to film today. What's Robbie going to do? Uh, I think Robbie's stuff is still here since they were staying at Penelope's before anyway. So they'll they'll change or like kind of wash up and get changed. I imagine all of you kind of brought your stuff to Penelope's because everybody's place has been tampered with in one way or another. OK, so you change and you do all that and then head over to the studio. Yeah, I think I'll just I'll wait for everyone who's going from here just so we're we're all carpooling. Yeah. I'll put Easter down on the table since I figure Buttercup's going to come with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buttercup always goes everywhere. Uh, Imani, what does Imani do? I think I'm in the same boat as Robbie. I just get dressed and then head to the studio from Penelope's. Okay. It's that weird feeling of like a bunch of really bad stuff has happened. And you're like, I guess I have to keep living my life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess I just have to keep being a person. <laughs> Candace. Does Evie do the same thing Does or is there something else that you want to do? Um, I think Evie doesn't really know what to do with herself. It's like she went from, oh, God, Rose is going to kill everyone to, oh, shit, Cass is a werewolf to, oh, shit, I'm <laughs> fucking old to, oh, shit, I'm married now to <laughs> whatever this is now. So she's just she's going to just go along with whoever. I was married now. Nah. Exactly. Thank you, Sam. Um, <laughs> she like just goes along with whoever is doing what. Like Evie just Evie and Buttercup. If someone's getting into a vehicle and driving somewhere, Evie's probably in the car. Might go with Belle if Belle's doing something cool. Like Evie is just no thoughts, no thoughts, just love. I'm kind of living for Evie and her Sadie Sadie married lady phase mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> um, no thoughts, just wife. That's just it. wife. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with Mac. Mac, you show up at your house and Henri comes to the door when you get there and he's all like, I was a bit worried about you usually not gone for so long. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, darling. Um, things have just been a little crazy with the studio and uh, some friends were going through some things and needed me. Are you taking a shower at your place or did you take it at Penelope's? Probably at my place. Okay. He looks at you with a raised eyebrow. He goes, were you playing with a dog or something? I'm sorry, what? You smell like a dog right now. There's a really strong musk coming off of you. Uh, I, I maybe in passing, I, I, I have to shower, to be honest. It's a bit embarrassing. Well, all right. Well, take a shower and we can talk some more. So you go and you shower and you come back and he says, so who's the girl? It's that obvious, huh? Yeah. Sorry, I just, I, I wanted to tell you, but... Don't be sorry, I'm glad for you. I'm just wondering who she is. When are you bringing her home? When does she get to meet the family? <laughs> well, it's, uh, would you believe me if I said it's complicated? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's what our lives are, is complicated. But you, you remember Penelope. You know, I, I think I introduced you when you were over at the studio once. Oh, that, yeah, I remember, I remember her. She seemed very quiet, shy almost. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Um, but she's really, she's really sweet. But like I said, it's, it's complicated. Well, yeah, of course. Well, when you're ready, have her over for dinner or brunch or, you know, cocktails or something. Well, I, I'm sure she would love that. Uh, so do you tell him at all about anything or do you keep that to yourself for now i keep it to myself because i'm headed to the studio and i only have a few minutes and it doesn't seem like i'm gonna fit that in in a few minutes yeah absolutely all right so you head over to the studio let's jump over to the four in the car robbie evie imane and penelope 
All of you make a spot hit and roll. Penelope is driving. The the double zero and then another zero. That's one. That's a hundred. Right? Cool. Yeah. Then I, I I I see nothing. Bugs fly into my eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fifty one under sixty three. All right. Cool. What about you, Imani? Six under twenty five. The two of you notice a black Lincoln following you. It has tinted windows. It's about two car lengths behind. Penelope, darling, I I don't mean to cause alarm. Everyone, please stay calm. But it appears we're being followed by a black Lincoln. It's about two car lengths behind us. Uh, Amani looks over her shoulder, just like as she's acting as if she's looking out the car window. Seems like some undercover. Typically, that's the type of car that's used. Why would they be following us, though? We haven't done... Well, y'all haven't done something. Oh. Well, technically, you didn't do anything. Uh, I did. And then I wasn't vigilant prior to. So, blood is on my hands, in a sense. What can you do about it? What's done is done. Ebony takes your hand and um, gives it a squeeze. As someone who has made uh, more than her fair share of mistakes. Not like this, Evie. Maybe not, maybe not, but... What I can say is you're right not letting yourself off the hook. But at the same time, don't go too far into this sadness and regret to forget that you have learned something and that you can be better. Yeah, got a point. So you make it to the studio and you drive in and the black Lincoln passes by the front gates. You see Cass getting out of her car and you all go into the studio. Jacques Couture is standing there. He goes, all right, thank you all so much for for coming in on a Sunday. We have eight scenes to get through today, and then we will be shuttling this over to do some post-production. And we are going to then have ourselves a premiere, and very shortly, of this film. Robbie, there's a gentleman waiting for you in your writer's room over there. He said he was your uncle or something. Robbie sprints. Okay. And sure enough, at the table, just a few years older, is Uncle Jake. And he stands up and he goes, they fought me on coming in here, but I was able to talk them into letting me in. Where have you been? Mexico. And I'll jump and hug him. He hugs you back because it's good to see you. Are you not? Are you not on the run anymore? I'm on the run, but I heard you were writing a movie and I wanted to see it. Yeah, uh, there's a premiere. There's a premiere um, soon, like next week soon. That's great. Can you stay that long? Yeah, of course I can. It's been a few years. I'm not as far up on the FBI radar as I was. Good. That's good. That's really good. And then I think Robbie like comes down from the high of excitement of seeing him again and realizes all the awful things that have been happening. Um, it's There's been a lot going on. I can't really offer you my my place got flooded. I'm staying somewhere ghost. You don't need to worry about it. Well, I mean we're we're going to be shooting a little bit. Do you want to do you want to watch? Yeah, that's why I'm here. Okay, we just have to be really quiet. Yeah. I I'm really glad you're here. I'm really glad I'm here too. I missed you. I missed you. Let's go watch you work. Well, uh, my work's already kind of mostly done unless I need rewrites. But it's still your work. You wrote the words, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> So there you go. I'm very proud of you. Let's go look what you did. So you go out. Let us jump over to Belle. Belle, as you enter into the police station, there looks to be a lot going on. And the desk sergeant looks up and goes, Belle Bellington, you looking for a scoop? Because I got one. Ooh, you know me, Dave. I'm always going to listen for that. We got something downstairs you need to see. Okay, I'm game. He takes you down into one of the few basements in L.A. and he flicks on the light and he goes, I hope you've got a strong stomach. You'd be surprised. So we've been tracking this uh, woman named Rose and her, I guess, um, roommate, Imani. Mm -hmm. She's implicated in a few different missing persons and murders, but we haven't been able to find Rose and Imani... We haven't found any direct correlation, but they've got to be in it together. Tony told us about Johnny, so we kind of know that angle, too. Do you know anything about Imani? I mean, I know her. 
I don't know how involved she is in any of this, but uh, I'll just say the the word I might use for her is negligent. Mm. Well, we raided her house this morning. Nobody was there except for this thing. And he flicks on the light and laying on the ground is a mangled body of Rose, half turned into a werewolf, half gurgling. And that is where we're going to end this episode. Holy <laughs> shit. Wait, oh, nice. holy what? What? Oh, 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 oh man. <laughs> Woo. Ruh, ruh. Wait, wait, she was gurgling as in she was not deed? Correct. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And and part uh, part of her was eaten. Oh. Yep. Uh-oh. She's ha- she 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 part of her looks like a a, a, a zombie werewolf. A werewolf, yeah. Fucking this hell. bitch won't die. <laughs> Read the room. All of this. All of this. I could have just shot her and avoided all of this, but no. <laughs> no, I had to lead her. <laughs> no, I had to be a bitch. <laughs> that's the thing, though. If you had shot her, then you might be in jail. And that seems worse in some ways. <laughs> no, I don't know if Imani's going to stay out of jail, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's it's difficult to <laughs> with all the shit going on you know yeah but are your but are your fingerprints on stuff what'd you say can you get can, can you get can you get community service can you, get <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine an ankle bracelet in the 1950s it'd be the size of a television on your <laughs> on your leg i couldn't even i feel like it would probably be like a ball and chain like it wouldn't even yeah. be <laughs> It wouldn't even be a fucking ankle bracelet. It would just be a ball and chain. <laughs> so thank you to all the listeners for listening. And thank you to all the players for playing. Let's find out where all these wonderful players are at. Let us start with Mac. Hey, y'all. I have been and will continue to be Mac Beauvais. You can find me everywhere on the internet is at strange like that. Hi, I've been Lev, and I probably will keep being Lev. I don't know why I said been. I am. But I have been playing Robbie. Um, this doesn't get any better any week to the next. You can find me on Twitter at Lego M2, the number two RS, or over at Mayday Roleplay, where we play a lot of different kinds of games, um, especially Delta Green, which I get confused for rules here sometimes, but that's okay. Hello, my name is Candace Magnificent. Uh, you can find me at the Candace Marie over on Twitter and Blue Sky, at Candace Magnificent everywhere else. You can hear more of me on the podcast Bloom and Blight, which is a Girl by Moonlight podcast, um, as well as over here. Um, every month, I believe, we are releasing a new episode of Beyond the Outer, an original mothership campaign. Um, if you want to know what I am up to, because I have a lot of stuff coming out that's pretty great, uh, just follow me on my socials and check me out. Hello, everyone. I am Sam Star. Uh, I played Amani. You can follow me all across the interwebs at Lust for Life, L-U-S-T-T-F-O-R-L-I-F-E-E-X. Uh, you can catch me every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Transplanter RPG's Twitch channel uh, in their second main campaign, The Chaos Protocol. Sad, gay, beautiful fantasy story. It's a great time you should watch and follow me on socials for you know other projects and stuff that i'm in hey i'm michelle you can find me on the socials at michulu that's m-i-c-h-u-l-h-u you can also find my music and wes's amazing sound effects if you subscribe to the plate mail games catalog through battle bards and I am Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games on all the different socials. You can find the show at 12 Sided Stories, the number 12, then Sided Stories on all the different social uh, platforms. Or you can find us on our website, which is 12 Sided Stories All Written Uh, And there you can find links to all of our different shows, to Discord, which you should join and talk to us on. Also, if you want to help out the show, go over to Patreon, become a Patreon backer. We uh, really, uh, yeah, we really appreciate the support there. Uh, if you can't do that, uh, give us a review on your favorite platform. Give us a shout out and tag us and let us know that you're enjoying the show. Thank you so much for listening. And we will talk to you later with more Otherworld Hollywood. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye.